Let's get into a deep dive fragrance lesson on animalics, and then I'm going to tell you my top five sexiest animalic fragrances, because this is another one of those sexy fragrance categories where when you find the right fit, it's kind of magic. And so some of the most common used animal materials in the past were hyrax, which is this little rodent, and the key characteristic of this rodent, they're quite cute, think more like guinea pig than rat, um, is that they all poop in the exact same place, and so you get these columns of petrified poop over hundreds of years, because they do this for decades, and people gather the petrified poop and somehow they make an essence and it's called Africa stone. Uh, next up in our weird animals is ambergris and I think this is maybe one of the more luxurious animalic materials. There is a lot of mystery as to what secretion from the whale is ambergris. Uh, we don't know if it comes out the back end or the front end. What we know is they have a lot of issues digesting squid beak. Uh, it makes their tummy upset, so they expel one way or another this um, this excrement that then floats in the ocean and these like uh, undigested squid beaks, they're clumped together, they get a lot of sunshine and through exposure to this, uh, they start to smell really good. We also have civet, which is like a cat, somewhere in between, a, yeah, I think it's feline, it might also be a very large rodent, but uh, this civet cat, it excretes, it kind of just like, spurts out um, from its sex glands, another secretion. And this one I'm, I'm not so fond of, the odor, but when you mix it with florals, it does something incredible. It really elevates and makes everything bloom in your composition. So it works really well for that. So another reason why people use these materials is because they do lend a certain sexiness to perfumery. There is something about us that's very primal and drawn to these animal scents. And so I'm gonna share with you guys my top animal, animalic fragrances, starting with Musk Kublacon by Serge Luton. I talk about this video in my musk fragrances and I do mention that it is an animalic musk. Um, so it has the benefit of being this beautiful skin blooming scent because of the musk, but it definitely has this raw animalic edge to it. It's a little bit dirty and a lot of sexy. Next on my list is Jicky. And so this fragrance is often talked about as being one of the first fragrances to use a synthetic. It has a heavy dose of coumarin, but it definitely also has some civet notes that makes this fougere bloom. So you have lavender and coumarin, but there's also definitely not real civet in here, at least I don't think so, but definitely civet type notes that really make this flavor make this fragrance bloom, but also make it so that it's a bit polarizing. So not everyone loves Jicky. Uh, some people have a lot of issues in the top, but it's a fragrance you really want to wait for the dry down because the dry down has this gorgeous, uh, sexy, skin, floral, animalic facet that I just think is really worth waiting for. And if it works right on your skin, it really could become your signature because on the right person, it is super, super sexy. The following fragrance on this list, I have uh, two kind of ultra niche perfumes for you. Um, so the first one is Bogues Mai. What I love about this fragrance is the mix of the jasmine and the civet. And I know jasmine sounds like it could be a really feminine note, but something about the civet here makes it really, really unisex. Um, I wouldn't say it's more masculine or more feminine. It has great longevity. It has great projection. And it's just super interesting. I've, I've worn this fragrance many times and it's just something where I always discover new facets about it. I wouldn't say it's an easy wear. It's kind of like an intellectual fragrance. And by that, I mean it's not that you need to know a lot about perfume to wear it. It's just a kind of... It's gonna be a fragrance that's on your mind. You're gonna be thinking about it. You're gonna be dissecting it. It is by no means an easy wear where you put it on and you live your life. Like this fragrance really captivates you and I love that about it. It's a piece of art. And the next super niche fragrance that I have on my list is Papillon Perfumery's Salome. And so this is named after this ancient dancer, Salome and the Seven Veils, that was sent out to seduce a king with this dance. And um, so obviously, 
obviously it's intended to be a very sexy fragrance. It's another fragrance centered around Hyrax and Civet, which we talked about earlier. Um, it is a fragrance with a lot of depth and it's a true animalic fragrance. It really um, highlights them. They are the star of this composition. What I love about that is that it's super rare and somehow it doesn't smell too dirty. It it is not an office fragrance, and it could be a date night fragrance. I think it, it is super, super sexy. Um, yeah, I, I actually really love this fragrance, and it gets a really positive response. It's one of those fragrances that you smell and you think it would be more polarizing, but when I worked as a perfume salesperson, surprisingly easy to sell. It really resonates with a lot of people. Up next on the list, how could we forget Kuros, which to me was one of the first designer animalics. Um, very different for its time. It's a big fragrance and it's so funny because, you know, we also have Le Mal, which is a bit too dirty even for me. It's an absolute masterpiece. But to me, if Le Mal is too animalic for you, maybe try Kuros. It's, to me, it's just more palatable. Um, it's a touch cleaner, I think, than Le Mal. And so... Uh, it's what makes me love it. I, I really, really love Kuros. Um, I think you're maybe even a Lamal or a Kuros person. I think maybe one resonates with you more than the other, but both are really, really great picks for um, a designer animalic fragrance because unfortunately it's not something that we see very often. And last, but absolutely not least, is my all-time favorite animalic scent. I didn't mention this in my must video because to me, it's not a musk. I don't get a lot of musk's notes from it, um, but it is called Musk Ravageur. So I would classify this fragrance as an animalic spice um, and so warm, so cozy, so sexy. I can't with the really, really dirty fragrances. And here I really tried to pick compositions where they were still wearable, where you smell animalic, but you still smell really good. So please let me know your favorite animalic fragrances. I can't wait to hear all about them. If this is um, the type of video that you like to watch, if you like learning about fragrances and watching fragrance content, please consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. And for those of you who do subscribe, I really do appreciate you so, so much. Thank you. And I hope to see you all in the next video. Bye everyone.